All right, welcome back to the channel. Today I got a cool tutorial for you guys. I created this uh, video animation in Blender on the right a few weeks ago, and I'm gonna show you how to composite that into real life footage. Um, and these are kind of the steps that we're gonna take to make that happen. You can see the before and after. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. All right, so I'm in Premiere here, and um, I have um, some footage of me sitting at a park bench. You're gonna wanna use a shot that was taken on a tripod so there's no motion. It is possible to do this effect with a moving shot, but it requires tracking the camera um, over time. So I'm gonna save that for another tutorial because it's a little more complex. The last thing to note uh, before we get started is just make sure that you have at least one or two frames where there's no object or subject in front of the billboard. That's gonna be really important for referencing uh, where to overlay this billboard. So for now, just go ahead and scrub to a part where there's nothing in front of the billboard. Go ahead and click this button here um, to export the frame. I'll save that to my downloads and let's hop out of Premiere. All right, so I'm gonna open up FSpy here. This is a really cool program that allows you to track um, a photo in 3D space. It's completely free. I'll make sure to put the download link down below. Uh, but essentially all you're gonna do is take that frame that you got um, and you're just gonna drag that into FSpy. Uh, you can change the number of vanishing points. Uh, for this, I'll just leave it at two. And essentially what you're gonna be doing is finding reference lines in the actual photograph that will allow you to set reference points for the camera. So you can just drag a point by clicking these little points here. And we'll start with the X axis, which is the red axis. And I'll find some horizontal lines in the actual photo to reference. And so this is a really clean uh, horizontal line. So I'll use that as my first reference. And then it's always good practice to use reference points that are in a different depth. So this one's a little closer to the camera. I'll select uh, this line here. I'll actually undim the photo so that you can see where I'm placing it. So this is a, a line here. You can actually hold shift to get a more precise look at where you're placing the line. Let's go ahead and do the Y now. Um, I'll go ahead and use this line here and then there. And then let's use something a little further down. So I'll use this crosswalk as a reference point. So I'll just use this end of the crosswalk and then I'll use this end of the crosswalk. And that's great. That establishes our vanishing point to be over here. Don't worry if this uh, looks a little complex. It's actually really easy. This is our, our origin here. And so wherever you place um, this point here um, is actually where um, when you add new objects, they will appear in the scene. So I'm actually just going to place it over here near the billboard so that we don't have to move things around too much. And you'll notice that um, this is actually a reference for uh, kind of how objects are appearing in 3D space. Make sure your Z axis is facing upwards. If you don't have it, you may have to play around with some of these settings. Um, and this will actually just uh, flip the axis uh, around. Um, I don't need to do that because my z-axis was correct, so I'm just going to set that back to x. So I'm going to place that origin point right here so that it's easier to move objects in Blender. And once you've done that, all you really have to do is hit File, Save As, and I'm going to save this to my downloads. So let's bounce out of FSpy. All right, so I've opened up a new Blender project here. Let's go ahead and delete the cube and delete the camera. Go to Edit, Preferences. You're going to want to install the FSpy Blender add-on. Um, I'll leave a link to that. Um, you'd install it the same way you'd install any other plugin. So I'm just going to type FSpy, make sure that this is uh, checked, um, and then I'm actually just going to save preferences so that I can use this in my next project as well. So once you have that done, what you're going to do is go to File, Import, and you're going to hit FSpy, and then you're going to locate where you saved that file. Um, and so I'll click uh, that file here, and now we have a uh, image that's actually been projected in 3D space, but only through um, this FSpy camera here. And you'll notice that you, you know you can like move around in the same way, but you won't be able to see it if you're outside of the camera. So just know that these objects aren't actually in the scene yet. This is just a reference point so that everything lines up. You can add objects into the scene by hitting Shift A. So for example, I could add a cube. I could scale it down with S. And then I could kind of manipulate this on uh, different axes to position objects that I want in the scene. And this is kind of the point of this tutorial here. It's to be able to add and 3D composite objects within our scene. But because we're just doing a billboard, I'm going to stick to a plane. So I'm going to actually delete this cube. I'm going to hit Shift-A. 
Um, and then I'm going to go over to image and I uh, have an add-on called images as planes. So to enable that, just go ahead and go into your preferences, type in images. Um, and this add-on, which is actually built into Blender, is called import images as planes. So just make sure that's checked. And what that allows you to do is import images that are pasted on a plane. Uh, it actually works for video too. I'm going to hit shift A. I'm going to go to image click images as planes and then I'm gonna open up the actual video that I want to play on the billboard and so I'll double click that and you won't be able to see it for now but just go ahead and move over to your viewport shading and this will allow you to see um, the video in 3d space and if I actually hop out of the camera you can see that this is actually the only object that's within the scene and if I hit play the video is actually playing on the billboard okay so what we really need to do is go back into our camera and make sure that this object here is lined up exactly with this billboard. You can move along the axis by hitting G and then Y for example will move it forward and back, G and X will move it left and right, and G and Z will move it up and down. Okay, so I'm going to start first by just getting a, uh, a rough estimate of the size and also uh, the position here. And once we have that going on, what we can do is actually go into edit mode with tab and you can make sure that you're hitting the vertex selection mode and you're just going to click on one of the points and then you're just going to move the point on the actual x-axis for example to fit the corners so we'll do that we'll do that for all the rest so now that we've got uh, the billboard in that spot, there's a couple things you can do. So if this was a project that I was doing for a client, I'd probably go a little further and I'd actually start modeling the actual geometry of some of the pieces here. And the reason I'd be doing that is so that I could add lights within the scene in 3D space where they appear, which we would call practical lights. And when we render, these lights would actually be bouncing off these objects here to create realistic lighting um, but because this was shot at nighttime and because I want to keep this video simple um, I'm actually just going to show you a trick to make video billboards look realistic at nighttime without having to model any of the scene here so I'm just going to hide all of this stuff here I'm going to add a cube into the scene so we'll add a cube here and I'll scale that down and what I'm just going to do is create a backing plate. I'm just going to make it the same exact size. It doesn't have to be super precise here. It's not perfect, as you can see, and that's okay uh, for the purpose of this video here. We're just going to keep it simple. So now when we go back in here, um, we have a little backing plate. I'm actually just going to make that really thin so that it just sits behind. So we're going to go into shading. We will add an emission texture instead delete that, have this into the base color, and then the alpha will be into the strength, mission to surface. That's looking better already. Okay, and when we play it, it plays the screen, it's all doing what it needs to do. So if you were to model out the scene and you have a bunch of lights in here, for example, you're going to want to use the cycles render engine. But for this tutorial, I'm going to keep it in Eevee. I'll check Bloom on, um, and then I'll go ahead into the Film tab here under your Render Properties, and I'm just going to click Transparent. So all it's going to render is the objects that are in the scene, which in this case is just going to be this video billboard, and then also the backing plate, uh, which won't end up being seen. So when you go to Render, uh, you'll see that it just renders out this billboard video right here. We go ahead and render out the animation and what this is going to do is just go through um, the timeline and just kind of render out this animation. I think I set it to 250 frames so that'll be uh, what I'm working with right now. Alright so we're gonna go back into Premiere and we're gonna import um, that animation so I'm gonna import I'm gonna go to my downloads folder where I saved all those frames I'm gonna click that frame image sequence, make sure that's checked, hit open. Now we got our little image sequence here, um, and there we go. But there's actually one thing that goes wrong. So you'll notice that when I walk in front of the camera, or when I go in front of the camera, this animation here 
is blocking me. So to fix that, we're going to do something called rotoscoping. Um, and to rotoscope, um, all we're going to do basically is just uh, make a mask around me uh, for each frame and kind of cut me out. I'll show you the After Effects way really fast, and then I'll also show you the alternative to have AI do it for you, um, which is actually the method I ended up using for this tutorial. All right, so we've dragged in our clip into After Effects. I'm just going to create a new composition by just dragging this in here. Now we have that point where, you know, I actually cross in front of the billboard. So let's fix that. We're gonna double click on the layer here. We're gonna open up the rotoscope tool. Essentially what this is gonna allow me to do is mask out myself. So go to the first frame, we'll start here. I'll just select the area by left clicking um, and I'll just select the parts of the image that I want to be in it. So I obviously want my feet. And then to remove parts that you don't want to be in it, you're gonna hold Alt while you drag and then I'm just going to delete them like that. Just keep refining until I get it right. It's really important that you get the first roto correct because this is what everything's going to be based on. So go slowly, uh, zoom in if you need to, make it as precise as you can. And the more time you spend on this, the better the final look um, and result. So just keep that in mind. So I'm just going to hit freeze here. And it's going to um, actually just track all of the frames as I move. So here um, the roto has finished and um, you'll notice that as I'm moving through the scene my body is still tracked um, and that's just this pink outline here. So I can go ahead and toggle the alpha overlay and when I go to render this basically by just hitting file, export, add to render queue, I can make sure that I select under my uh, output mo module, just go ahead and select channel RGB plus alpha, and I'll change that format into a PNG sequence, and I'll hit OK. And now it's only going to render out uh, me cut out um, from the background. All right, so I stopped the render prematurely just so I can show you how it exported basically a bunch of frames of me uh, isolated from the background so that we can throw that back um, on top of the footage um, and really quick in case you don't have access to After Effects or in case uh, you know it's too intensive for your computer or you just don't want to rotoscope for some sort of reason there's actually this really cool tool online um, called Runway ML and it uses uh, basically AI software to you know create certain effects you'll see that uh, what you can do is actually hit remove background okay so I went ahead and dragged in this uh, video layer uh, in Runway ML and then all I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to select myself here and it's gonna generate a mask. And then you can do the same thing by hitting exclude, clicking this part, making sure I go back to include and make sure everything is highlighted as it should be. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And now that we have that going, you can hit done masking. And all it's gonna do now is basically render through in the same way that After Effects did and then once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and hit export. And if you're using the free version, unfortunately, you can only export at a 720p resolution. But if you do pay more, you can upgrade. Uh, for the sake of this tutorial, I'll just export a 720p version of me. All right, we're going to hop back into Premiere here. And uh, what we're going to do is grab that uh, rotoscope that you got from either Runway ML or After Effects. Um, I'll just download this and then I'm going to go ahead and drag that onto my project. I'll just right click, hit uh, set to frame size uh, because this one that I grabbed was 720p but the resolution of the rest of the video is 4k so I had to scale up and that's what's going to make me a little blurry which is okay. I'm just going to go ahead and trim to only show a specific section. Let's move all that back over. Go over to the effects panel and type key we're going to throw on an ultra key just make sure that that top clip is selected and then I'm going to go ahead and click on the green area this is not necessary if you did this in after effects because it would have already exported as a transparent background png sequence so you don't have to do this 
But now, as you can see, when I move in front of the actual object here, um, I'm masked out. Um, and so if I actually zoom in really closely, you will notice that there is still an outline around me. So let's do some cleanup here. We can go into the matte cleanup here. We can increase the choke slightly, and then we can add a little bit of soften. Uh, let's, let's reduce the choke a little bit. And now when we play it back, it's looking pretty good. And when I go in front of the screen, um, it still stays there because it's rendered in, in 3D space at the same exact angle. So all that's really left to do now is just to color the rest of the footage and make this blend in a little bit. You can do this in Blender uh, with the compositing tab. You can do this in Premiere, uh, but I actually like to do my color correction inside of DaVinci Resolve. I actually just exported um, everything together. Normally what you'd want to do is just export the frame with just the rotoscoped person and then also just exporting the original frame and then color those individually so that you can match the background screen. Um, but for this one, I didn't think it was necessary. So I'm just going to go ahead and change my color space transform to be that F log. I believe it was in rec 709. So I'll just keep that and then I'll go into Fuji film F log. And now we have something a little bit better to work with. So really all I'm going to do uh, for this here is probably just change the exposure a little bit. So I'll just lift the midtones so it's a little bit brighter. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'll actually lift the shadows slightly. And then I'll just increase the saturation slightly. Uh, let's do it in the grade saturation. And then lastly, I'll add a little bit of contrast. So I'll do that under my pre-contrast and we'll just up that a little bit. Boom. This is the final result. You can tell if you look really closely that the roto line is still around my head, but you can refine that if you take your time. For now, go ahead and export that. And uh, that's pretty much it.